Hey guys, YouTube World Hunter here. Alright, and here I am with my first video in about two weeks now. And yeah, the last video that I made was the video I did where I reviewed the two Illumination Chamber matches from No Way F2009, which was about two weeks ago. Yeah, it's just that I've been kind of uh, distracted for the last couple of weeks. I've just had like some stuff going on on for the last uh, couple of weeks and it's kind of kept me distracted from doing anything here but yeah i'm finally way back now and so yeah today is a uh, march 2nd which of course is like the birthday of theor geisel aka dr seuss and so yeah <laughs> as of today this would have marked his 115th birthday so yeah <laughs> yeah and so <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, he was born in 1904, so, yeah, kind of hard to believe, like, how old, old he was, so, yeah, and I figured with that, I would, I figured that in honor of Dr. Seuss, I would do something kind of different that I really have never done before for any uh, March 2nd and day at all. What, I figured what I would do for this video, in honor of Dr. Seuss, is I would count down what I think the top 10 best that Dr. Seuss books were. So, yeah, I know. So, yeah, if you were a kid, of course, like, you read, like, a lot of Dr. Seuss. Like, I know that I did. And, yeah, I mean, who didn't read a lot of Dr. Seuss books when they were a kid? Yeah, Dr. Seuss was probably the most famous uh, children's author of all time. I mean, yeah, he just had so many... Uh, books that he wrote oh yeah i mean it goes like yeah the amount of books that he wrote were just just like yeah they were like countless of how many books that dr seuss had written and so yeah and i figured i would just like count down what i think the top 10 best books that he wrote oh, are so yeah so this, that's just what i'm gonna do in this video i'm gonna be counting down what i think the top 10 and dr seuss books are so yeah, yeah, so, yeah, there are, so before I start, there are, like, some uh, books that some people would probably think, say, are some of the best in the top ten, but, yeah, there are just, like, some books that I kind of left off this list, just because, I don't know, I didn't really, like, really, like, ever get into some of Dr. Seuss books, and I just really wasn't big on some of them. Like, there were, like, uh, books like, um... Fox and Socks, and the Lorax, all the places you'll go. Yeah, I mean, there were just like some of the some of the more well-known uh, Dr. Seuss books that I just really did not really think were like as good. I do think that like some of those uh, books are kind of like not as good as like quite some others, like the ones that I do have on this list. Like there are like a lot the books on this list. I thought that I could, like, read more than some of the other books like that. So, yeah, of course, like, <laughs> like there were just, like, so many Dr. Seuss books out there. So, yeah, it was kind of hard to just choose, like, which one of the, which books are really the ten best. But, yeah, I just decided to narrow it down. So, yeah, of course, like, like Dr. Seuss books, there's, like, many of them. Like, if you, like, search up Dr. Seuss books on Google, it'll just be, like, a huge list of books. So, yeah. But I decided to just kind of just like narrow it down to what I thought the 10 best were. And I also like tried to stick to just like one book of a series and book and these uh and these uh, series because yeah, Dr. Seuss did like kind of write uh quite a few sequels to books that he had done before. Like uh he like Cat in the Hat had a sequel old book and uh yeah, there was, like, all the things you can think, which I guess is, like, some people could kind of consider a sequel to all the places you'll go. And, yeah, there were just, like, some other uh, books like that that were actually sequels to previous books that Dr. Seuss had written. So, yeah, I tried to just kind of, like, stick to one book for any series of books that he may have done. So, yeah, okay, but... So, yeah, that's just, like, what how this list is going to work. So, yeah. So let me just get started with what I think the top 10 Dr. Seuss books are. All right. So uh, number 10 is the book uh, I Am Not Going to Get Up Today. 
So, yeah, I actually did read this book as a kid quite a few times. I just thought that this was kind of funny. It's just about a boy that just was refusing to get up up in the morning and just said that he was just going to be in bed all day. And I just thought it was funny just, like, how much he exaggerated this with like, all the stuff that could happen to try to get him up. Like, neighbors all, like, come in and just, like, making a bunch of noise to try to wake him up. Like, a van come in, the police come in. <laughs> yeah, just like a... He just over-exaggerated it with, like, just all this stuff that people can do to get him up. And I just, like, found it funny, like, how, like, much he, like, over-exaggerated it. Yeah, so, yeah, I just always just found this funny. Like, it starts off just kind of, like, really, really simple, just, like, with, Talking about things that, like, his uh, mom and his uh, brother and sister could do to try to get him up. Like, pouring ice water on his head and stuff. And then he, like, just, like, like he just, like, makes it, like, get even, like, more exaggerated over time. Like, what the, the stuff that I said before, like, neighbors come in and make a noise to wake him up. The police come in. The uh, Air Force or, like, the Navy come in. I mean, yeah, just, like, a bunch of stuff. I mean... And, like, it makes you, like, like, the newspaper and stuff, like, he's just a kid that refuses to get up. Is that just something that really was, like, stooped to, like, the kind of level of the police getting involved in it, making a front page news? Like, come on. Yeah, so I just always found it kind of funny, just, like, how overboard that it went, but... And so, yeah, I just did enjoy reading it just because of, like, how over-exaggerated that it did get. So, yeah, all right, so number 10 is I am not going to get up today. All right, at number 9 is the book If I Ran the Zoo. So, yeah, I always found this to be, like, kind of funny, too. It's just about a kid that is just talking about, like, what would happen if he had his own zoo. He would just, say like, how he has just, like, the most unimaginable animals and stuff that was just like unbelievable and how people would react and now throughout the story like this uh, kid is just like talking about like the stuff that he would have in his uh, zoo so yeah I have so yeah it's been like a long time since I had read this book but yeah I just like remember or like just finding it kind of funny just like how precise that this kid was talking about what he would have in his zoo and just like how unbelievable the animals in his zoo would be so yeah so that's really all i can say because yeah i can't really like say much about it since it has been a, quite a while since i have read it but yeah i just always like found it funny just like how much this kid wanted his zoo to be unbelievable and stuff so yeah all right so yeah number nine is if i ran the zoo okay at number eight is the Butter Battle Book. So, yeah, this is another one that I just have always just found, like, kind of funny, and also, like, just really interesting, because, yeah, it's about, like, this, these are two different uh, sets of uh, uh, creatures of some kind, yeah, like the Ukes and the Zooks, yeah, and, yeah, they're just, like, different just because of, like, the show that they just, like, eat butter with bread a different way. Like, Zooks eat it with the butter side down, and Yooks eat it with the butter side up. And just because of that, they're, like, two opposing different, opposing different, um, stable, I guess. Like, that's all it's about, just because one side has it with the, um, butter side up, and one has it with the side down. I just always found that just so silly and ridiculous at the same time. Yeah, and like the, like there's a one from the uh, Ukes and and one from the Zooks that are like trying to like blow the, like, just try to get rid of the opposing side, and it just seems like with the head uh, Uke, Uke, he's just being outsmarted by the Zook, who can suffer. They would just like have the same ideas, and I really did like the ending of it where, like, you really don't know because uh. Yeah, I won't actually, like, spoil what the ending is, but, yeah, it's, like, like, show where both sides are, like, in danger of, like, their other, uh, side being, like, destroyed for good. Oh, and then, like, the two, 
the Yuke and the Zook like come face to face with each other or to try to get rid of the other one once and for all with their ideas. You know, and yeah, it's never actually you like revealed like which side actually does win and which side actually does destroy the opposing side. So I do like how it just kinda like really just let you like draw your own conclusion on which side wins. So yeah, I did like that about the book. Like so yeah, I just found it really interesting that way. So yeah, alright, so yeah, that's just really why I like the Butter Battle book because it's just like so silly and ridiculous and really makes you like just draw your own conclusion to it. So yeah, alright, so yeah, number uh, eight is the Butter Battle book. Alright. And number seven is Wacky Wednesday. <laughs> I found this book just to be like pretty funny as well. I mean it's just like like throughout the book it's just like showing a bunch of like silly stuff that it was just like so off, just like like uh, I, it's hard for me to really like explain this book, but yeah, it's just like a you just see like a bunch of like silly stuff going on throughout the day, hey, in the town that the book takes place, and so yeah, it's just kind of hard for me to explain. But yeah, if you want, like, I'm sure you can like find like the find a video on YouTube of like the book being read aloud with all the pages and stuff. Uh, so, yeah, you can probably just, like, look up the book and take a look at it for yourself and really just see what I mean for it. But, yeah, I it's kind of just hard for me to explain. So, yeah, actually, it's really speak louder than words. So, yeah, just find the book. Look, like, look up a video of the book being read and just, yeah, you can just see for yourself, like, how silly this really is. So, yeah. 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 You can, it'll probably be, like, um, uh, illustrated out for you better than I can really talk about it and stuff. But yeah, it's just like, I just found it funny, like, just how silly this book is. So, yeah, number seven is Wacky Wednesday. And number six is There's a Wacket in My Pocket. So, yeah, this book, uh, this book is, like, kind of interesting, too. I mean, the title isn't really, like, really what the book is really about. It's just about, like, how this the star of this book, whoever, like, the character in this book, and it's, like, rhyming throughout, just saying how there's, like, all these, uh, uh, weirdly, uh, named, uh, creatures throughout the book and his, like, house and stuff, and just saying, saying, like, um, yeah, he's just, like, talking about, like, these, uh, creatures and stuff, like, with these, uh, weird names and just like coming up with other words that really do rhyme with the names of these creatures so yeah i just have found it fun found that like just kind of interesting also how she, he just like constantly is rhyming with all these like strange creature names and stuff so yeah so yeah this is another one that is kind of like hard for me to really talk about because i really didn't read this book very much as a kid and stuff so yeah this is probably another one like with a wacky wednesday where yeah, if you actually, like, look up this book on YouTube, like, find a video about the book being, with the book being read, yeah, it'll probably explain to you better than I can, so, yeah, you can probably just, like, look up the book and just, yeah, just check it out for yourself and just see, like, what I'm really talking about, so, yeah, alright, so number uh, six is there's a locket in my pocket. Alright. And number five is the ABC book. So, yeah, this one, I, I'm just like, I do find this one to be pretty interesting as well, because it's not just like how it really is with a kid's book with ABCs, He's where, like, you would just, like, see it, like, just A is for one word, B is for another, C is for another, yeah, just like how it talks about just words that the letters start with. Well, it really does, like, sort of have that concept. It's not really just like that where it says A is for a word that A starts for, B is for another word, B starts for, C is for... Oh, word that C star for yeah. What this actually does it is like while it does do that, it also just like it's just like really just like giving out like sentences with with a bunch of words that the letter does star for like a just like it has a whole sentence of what of like a bunch of words that start with a a and stuff and yeah it really just. And it does it with B and C and D and yeah, just all of the ways of the alphabet. It just like goes through it and just really does uh, you know, just talk, have just a bunch of sentences with 
a bunch of words that every letter does start with. <laughs> so yeah, I just have like thought that that was a clever concept as well. And I really do think it's much more interesting than just like having it be like a traditional kids ABC book where it just has A is for something, B E is for another thing, another thing, C is for another, yeah, just and so on and so forth. Yeah, I think it is like a more creative for what this book really did to illustrate like the or talk about like ABCs and stuff. So yeah, I do think it is kind of interesting. So yeah. So that's the best way to talk about it. So yeah, number five is the ABC book. And number four is Horton Hatches the Egg. So yeah, of course like there have been like a few uh, Horton book but uh, books by uh, Dr. Seuss. There's like Horton Here's a Who and also this one and yeah probably like a few others as well. Oh well, well, yeah, but yeah, I do think that this is probably my favorite one. Yeah, I mean, Horton Hears a Who. Oh, I did like that one. It seemed kind of a little dark, like, like, you know, like how, like when, like the, uh, the dust speck on the clover, like gets dropped into a patch of clovers and stuff and like the town of Whoville was like, like really like damaged just in the drop and then when like the when Horn White gets captured by the Wiggersham brothers and stuff how and they plan to oil the dust back so yeah it's kind of dark I really do think that this one Horn had to be a it's kind of like more a uh, 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 more a uh, child friendly and I just really do think that it is like a, a more of a Dr. Seuss style concept of being like more like for kids and not really something that's really like really that dark and that it's real this book really isn't and yeah i do like and yeah this book does kind of show like how determined horton is to really be a good uh <laughs> really act like a friend and stuff how horton really just agrees to just just sit on well just keep an egg a bird's egg warm while the bird is off on like vacation and horton is determined to stay and of course like it has a uh, horton's like no one catchphrase. I meant what I said, and I said what I meant. And elephants fade full one hundred percent. Yeah, and just like even when Horton's in like really bad situations, he does continue to just sit on the egg. And I thought it was kind of funny, like when like there were some hunters that were amazed of Horton and his determination to just stay on the egg, and they like take him, take him away, like load him. And, while he's still sitting on the egg in the nest, load him onto a wagon, eventually onto a ship and stuff, and just, like, make him a circus attraction. <laughs> and then, yeah. And then it also does, like, have the the uh, clever ending as well. I won't give it away, but, yeah. The ending for this uh, story, because of how, what Horton, how long Horton was on the egg, <laughs> I do think that it was, like, a clever uh, twist in the ending. So, yeah. Yeah, so if you haven't, if you don't know the ending of the book, yeah, Check it out, like, find the book. You can probably find it on YouTube, a video of it, and, yeah, you can see for yourself, like, how much, how clever of a twist I think it really is. So, yeah. All right, so, yeah, number four is Horton Hatches the Egg. All right, at number three is Green Eggs and Ham. So, yeah, who doesn't know this story? I mean, yeah, this is, like, one of the more famous Dr. Seuss stories, just, yeah, of course, with this, the unnamed character just like in the denial of eating green eggs and ham i'm just saying he doesn't like um like him himself yeah this is probably like one of the most famous dr seuss concepts like i remember one year when i was like in elementary school we actually did eat green eggs and ham ham and stuff and so yeah this is just probably just like a really well-known concept and it really did has like gotten like a lot of kids to really get into this idea of eating green eggs and ham. Yeah, and so, yeah, and so yeah, I did like this. I remember, like, this story was actually part of the, the living books. I'm not sure how many of you actually do know about the living books, but yeah, that's like, was like a, a PC type of game series, I guess, where you could actually, like, play inside these stories, like, similar to those at Disney animated storybooks. So, yeah. Yeah, and of course, like, in the end, like, the character does end up liking the green eggs and ham. So, yeah. 
Uh, so yeah, I do like this book, and yeah, this was one of the Dr. Shrews books that I definitely did read the most as a kid, so yeah, so I don't really think I need to talk about this one very much, because I'm sure just about all of you do know about this one, so yeah, number three is Green Eggs and Ham. Alright, at number two is How the Grinch Stole Christmas. So, yeah, I've already talked about the Grinch which a lot before, like, I've already reviewed, like, the, the uh, the original uh, Chuck Jones animated Grinch, and as well as like the uh, Jim Carrey movie, yeah. And I did also see like that the new Grinch that just came out this past November and stuff, but I haven't really talked about it. But I did say I was looking forward to that, so yeah. So yeah, I really have talked about the Grinch a lot. So yeah, I really don't think I really need to talk about it very much here. So yeah, but yeah, I have told you before, I really do. Love the Grinch a lot. The Grinch is probably like my favorite Dr. Seuss character of all time, and this was probably my favorite Dr. Seuss book. I mean, yeah, I really do love the Grinch, and so, yeah, don't really need to talk about it very much, but yeah, I really, really do love this book a lot. So, well, I, I did love it as a kid, and yeah, it was probably the one that I did read the most. So, so yeah, so really do did like the Grinch, and yeah, of course, I. The Grinch is, like, one of the most famous Dr. Seuss characters of all time, so, yeah, I really don't need to talk about it very much, because I really have already talked about the Grinch so much before, so, yeah, so you all know about it, so, yeah, so number two is How the Grinch Stole Christmas, and at number one, the best Dr. Seuss book of all time, the number one Dr. Seuss book of all time, uh, yeah, you all know what it is, because, yeah, it's the most famous Dr. Seuss book of all time. The Cat in the Hat. Yeah, I mean, yeah, who doesn't know The Cat in the Hat? The Cat in the Hat is the most famous Dr. Seuss character of all time. This is the most famous Dr. Seuss book of all time. And I mean, of course, like, they had that horrible movie from, like, 2003, 2004, 2005. I don't remember the exact date. It came, year it came out. It was probably, like, 2003-ish. Yeah. Of course, that was horrible. But the book is, like, like one of the most famous books of all time, of course. It's the most famous Dr. Seuss book of all time, probably one of the most famous children's books of all time. Yeah, I mean, The Cat in the Hat is just such a famous story, and he's such a famous character. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah who does? I mean, yeah, The Cat in the Hat has just, like, full of all this stuff with having fun, fun and stuff, entertaining the two kids. Kids. Thing one, thing two, the fish. Yeah, I mean, everyone knows the story, so... <laughs> yeah, and like I said before, it did have a sequel. The Cat in the Hat comes back. Back in, yeah, and it, like, had some, like, cool, sort of spin-off Cat in the Hat stories. It had, like, it can take on a hundred tigers or something. Yeah, just, like, some stories like that. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, but the, the Cat in the Hat is, like... Like, like I said, he's the most famous Dr. Seuss character of all time. Everyone knows this, and so, yeah, I mean, was there any doubt that this was going to be number one at all? I mean, so, yeah. And, yeah, some people actually do kind of, like, like think of the cat in the hat as Dr. Seuss, right? and he really is the Dr. Seuss mascot. I mean, I don't know, like, when, like, a lot of elementary schools, when they have, like, Dr. Seuss weeks and stuff, the cat in the hat is, like, a mascot character. Yeah, they always have masquerade the cat in the hat as dr seuss and stuff so yeah i mean the cat in the hat he's just like really like like yeah he's like a really famous character and yeah the things that people always do when they think of dr seuss they do immediately think of the cat in the hat so yeah i mean yeah so yeah that really doesn't really make it a surprise that really this book really is number one on the list so yeah so yeah number one is the cat in the hat all right so yeah, all right, so yeah, and that's, those are my uh, top 10 Dr. Seuss books, so yeah, I hope you guys did enjoy this list, yeah, you can let me know what some of your favorite Dr. Seuss books were when you were a kid, yeah, you can comment on my channel and tell me what some of your favorite Dr. Seuss books are, if I didn't include any of them on, in this list, and yeah, tell me what some of your favorite Dr. Seuss books were as a kid, all right, but yeah, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and yeah, stay tuned, as yeah, I'm now gonna try to get back into it and start making more videos. So, yeah, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.